And today we're having Anna Pushkas, and uh, she's going to talk about the correction factor for cuts multi groups and T deformed root multiplicities. Thank you all for coming. Thank you very much for um, for the invitation to speak and for organizing the seminar. I, I mentioned this earlier, but even though I, I uh, don't, uh, uh, gen I'm not generally able to join real time. I've enjoyed uh, many of the talks after the fact from the recording. Um, so today I would like to talk about a, um, a correction factor that comes up when uh, one wants one one takes a formula from representation theory of uh, reductive piadic groups uh, and then extends it to uh, to the infinite dimensional setting uh, and in fact the Kotzmudi setting. Um, so uh, most of what I'm going to say is, uh, well essentially I think all of what I'm going to say is except for uh, citations of other works is is joint work with uh, Dina Karmutai and Ian Whitehead. Okay so McDonald has a beautiful identity in a 1972 paper relating what I will call for perhaps lack of a better word, a wild symmetrizer to uh, the Poincare polynomial of, a, of the wild group. Um, so on the left-hand side, we have um, the wild group uh, acting on this uh, product over the positive roots that's perhaps familiar to many of you from Piadic formulas. And on the right hand side, we have a polynomial encoding the lengths uh, that occur in the wild group. Um, so interestingly, um, when one uh, generalizes this to uh, infinite root systems, uh, the, the identity doesn't hold anymore as written, but instead a modification holds where on the left hand side, one must insert the correction factor M. It is this correction factor M that I will be concerned with. Um, well, this or a slight variant of it, M prime, um, I will say a couple of examples of, of uh, piadic uh, formulas that, that have this correction factor M and some of them will really have the correction factor M prime the way I've written it. The difference is whether or not the um, whether or not the uh, imaginary root multiplicities are included in M or not. I prefer to include them. Okay, so of course here on the, in the, uh, for Kotzmudi root systems, if this root system is infinite, uh, then I'm taking a, a product here over just the, the, um, the real roots, positive real roots for the unprimed version. And on the right hand side, I now have an infinite sum, so a Poincare series. Okay, um, so I in this in this joint work with uh, Dina Karmuthai and Ian Whitehead, we we try to understand some things about this correction factor in the Kotzmudi setting, specifically beyond affine types. Uh, as we'll see, for affine types, uh, this correction factor is known. Um, so when we say we wanted to understand certain things about it, it will uh, the, the statements will take more or less the following shape. So for we will write M as a product over the positive imaginary roots or root lattice, uh, well, root cone, I should say, if it's positive. Um, and uh, for, for every uh, positive imaginary for every element of the positive imaginary root cone will have um, a product of uh, factors of the form one minus t to the n e uh, to the lambda, where lambda is this element of the root cone, and uh, this will appear with some with some exponent, and then we'll we'll connect these uh, exponents m lambda n, um, so for uh, lambda here and then n a positive or non-negative integer, we'll collect them for each lambda into a polynomial. Uh, this will in fact turn out to be a polynomial. Uh, the, the constant term of these polynomials is the multiplicity of the imaginary uh, uh, root or well element of the, of the root cone um, for, uh, for reasons of just the definition of M. So in some sense, these m lambda t, this plain m lambda t polynomials are deformations of the imaginary root multiplicities. 
So if you've ever thought about imaginary root multiplicities of Cosmody groups, you know that this means that they are not easy to compute. But, but we will try and say some things about them nevertheless. Um, but my hope um, with this talk and uh, well, all versions of this talk that I've given is that uh, someone will tell me how to compute them or at least how to compute more things about this factor M. Okay, um, so, so this is the plan. So I, I wanted to say a few words about how M appears in the formulae of uh, piadic Cosmody groups. For example, it appears in the computation of, uh, of McDonald's, uh, McDonald's computation of the spherical function. Um, so here S is the, is the Satake map, so if we take um, the image of, of this uh, element of the spherical Hecke algebra um, under the Satake map, we can express that as a polynomial of lambda. And, and in the Kotzmudi context, or well, in the, in the affine context, even uh, this correction factor M appears. And, um, and so this, uh, uh, has been generalized by Braverman, Kajdan, and Patnaik to the affine context, and then uh, by Bardi, Pons, Kosland, and Rousseau to the, to, to the further Cosmody generality, uh, and this M persists. And uh, it, it also persists when we take a limit in lambda, and, and this converges to a gindekin karpilevich formula, um, which was again done by Braverman, Garland, Kajdan, and Patnaik in the affine setting, and then um, uh, August Eber uh, and uh, Abidali independently in the in the Katsmudi generality. Um, so here again, M, this first M that I wrote down appears because the factors corresponding to the multiplicities of imaginary roots were included in it. it this is, I suppose, a somewhat technical detail. Okay, and then um, very intriguingly too, to me and perhaps some of you, this M also appears in uh, in generalizations of the Kassam and Shalaika formula um, for a spherical Whitaker function into affine types. So this was uh, done uh, in the non-metaplectic context by by Manish Patnaik, and then in the uh, in the metaplectic analog um, for any any Kotzmudi type in uh, in my joint joint work with Manish Patnaik. Um, and again, here here we have M prime, not M. Um, but but again, this essentially the same factor appears in this formula, and the way that appears that it appears here is um, by something that relates essentially a Hecke symmetrizer to a Weyl symmetrizer. Um, so I'll say a little bit more about that. So, for example, if one wants to express a Whittaker function um, in terms of the action of uh, Demosorlustic operators on, on some monomial, one can do that in uh, Kotzmudi generality. But then, so one has something like the sum over the while group of, of TW, where this TW is some element of, a, of an Iwahori Hecke algebra. If something like this acts on a monomial, well, that's, that's great if we know that that expresses a Whittaker function, but it's also great if we can understand the connection between this and um, something that looks like the kassaman like a formula. So um, some uh, expression of a while character via the while uh, character formula or some expression of a while cat's character in the, uh, in the infinite dimensional context multiplied by some um, some uh, deformed wild denominator. Uh, and again, if, if one wants to understand the connection between these two shapes, so some, in, in some sense, a representation of, uh, of an Ibohori Hecke algebra and the representation of the wild group, then, um, or uh, specific elements of, of uh, each respectively, then the, the quotient is given by this, um, by this M prime. Well, of course, in the metaplectic context, M looks slightly different and uh, than in the non-metaplectic context, but not sort of essentially different. Okay, but for the purposes of this talk, um, we'll uh, focus on using McDonald's identity and its Cosmody generalization um, for, uh, for getting a handle on M. And I just want to mention that uh, 
well, I will say that in the affine context, the value of M is known by uh, Chernik's solution to the McDonald constant term conjecture. This M is the constant term, right? So this is, um, well, McDonald's constant term. So, so this is the norm uh, squared of one, where, uh, where the norm is the one used to define um, McDonald polynomials, so for, with respect to which they are orthogonal. Okay, um, so I, I wanted to mention one more uh, topic in which in which something like M emerges, um, which is that McDonald's second proof of the um, of of this identity for finite while groups um, went via computation of the Betty numbers of uh, uh, of a flag variety. So on the one side, right the right hand side, the Poincaré polynomial one can express that in terms of counting Schubert cells. And the left-hand side is a computation of Dolbocco homology. And because the flag variety is uh, smooth and projective, the Dolbocco homology is equal to Betti homology by the Hodge theorem. And, and therefore the two sides are equal. Now, the fact that this fails beyond finite type is, is, is an indication that Cotsmoody flag varieties are not smooth. Um, but because they are homogeneous, they are in some sense everywhere, sing, everywhere singular. And so Fischel, Groinowski, and Telemann uh, explicitly compute the, um, the Dolboko homology of the affine flag variety and prove uh, something like a strong McDonald conjecture. So this essentially amounts to, uh, well, it of course is, is from a different context, but from our, our perspective, it, it, it amounts to uh, computing a, a further one, uh, one, one more parameter deformation of M in the, in the affine setting. Okay, so this has some, some geometric um, uh, aspects as well. Okay, so I will just uh, now dive in and say uh, how to define uh, this M correction factor, how to get a, a good handle on it. And then I'll say some uh, properties in the affine setting and what we can say in, uh, in, in Cotsmoody types. Um, so we want to, in the Cotsmoody general relativity and well, everywhere, uh, define M um, to, to make this uh, identity, this generalization of uh, McDonald's formula true. Um, so I, I, I put a question mark above this equality because um, defining M is slightly more, uh, one has to be slightly more careful in the uh, beyond affine type than in affine type in a, in a way that I will uh, explain presently. Um, so so in, 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 F, in up to affine types, this is, um, this is just what M is and it's, not, it's no problem to define it. And then um, beyond, um, uh, you know, whatever way you choose to define M, this is true for it. Um, and and what um, and beyond and beyond the affine types, this is what we will use for the definition. Okay, so um, we just uh, introduce some notation. So delta real is this uh, is this product over positive real roots, um, which uh, looks like um, a wild denominator. Delta t real is its deformation. And then PT is the Poincaré series of the wild group. Okay, so one can uh, take the positive root cone and within that the positive imaginary root cone. Uh, these are cones graded by height. And then one can work in the, in the ring of Florent series um, on Q plus. And the units in this ring have a specific product form um, again, as a product over the uh, imaginary uh, root cone, uh, positive imaginary root cone, right? So the generally uh, 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 something that we think of as a formal power series will will want to write in the in this shape as a product um, uh, of factors of the form one minus t to the n e lambda. And, and really the information of a unit will be encoded uh, by, by these coefficients m lambda n. Okay, so it's a bit 
uh, one has to be a bit careful um, defining a wild group action on this uh, on this ring. And in fact, one can't really define a wild group action on the whole uh, on all of the formal power series, essentially because um, if if a power series power series can be infinite in some direction, right? Somehow the support is infinite in some direction. Now the wild group, if the wild group acts on this, then then this this direction of 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 the support being infinite is moved around. And uh, one doesn't want to allow the support to be infinite, kind of along an entire line, right? This is a um, if you've if you've um, done computations um, with uh, with power series supported in a in a lattice that the wild group is acted on, then then perhaps this uh, this uh, uh, hand waving has some meaning for you. Otherwise, just uh, ignore it. It can be safely ignored for the rest of the talk. The point is that um, the wild group doesn't, one has to be careful with defining a wild group action, but the wild group does have a, a reasonable action on a multiplicative subset of uh, these Lorentz series units. And this multiplicative subset contains what we want it to contain, delta t real divided by delta real, this this, uh, this kernel. Okay, and um, and then one can show with some work that, that this uh, sum over the wild group um, on, up on the left-hand side here is a unit in an appropriate ring. Um, it's uh, regular at t equals zero and it has constant coefficient, which is the, which is the power series, uh, sorry, the Poincaré series. Okay, so essentially um, if, if I've completely uh, lost you with the technical details on this slide, my point is one has to say some words and those words have to be careful, but ultimately it's fine. Okay, um, so then we use this identity uh, in the middle here. So M times the sum over the wild group equals the Poincaré series to define M. Um, and uh, then M turns out to be while invariant and therefore supported on the positive imaginary root cone. And both M and its inverse are, are units in, again, an appropriate power series ring, regular at t equals zero, uh, their constant, and their constant coefficient is one. Furthermore, um, M inverse is the inverse of delta real over delta t real with respect to the positive imaginary root cone. So I, I would like to spend some time with this, uh, with this equation. So what this means is M inverse is some power series, delta real over delta T real is some power series. And when they are multiplied, then that has essentially no support on the imaginary uh, positive imaginary root cone. This determines an M inverse uniquely. So one can compute M inverse from this and we'll see examples of uh, this in a, a few moments. Okay. Um, so I, I want to say something about the support uh, for M. I mean, I've, I've said that it's a positive imaginary uh, root cone. So for, um, uh, it, you know, for, for, for the, in the affine types, M can essentially be expressed as a, as a single variable power series. Right? All the imaginary roots are multiples of a minimal one delta and, um, and M is supported on, on these. Okay, so this is, um, this is not uh, so surprising uh, given what I've said before. But in the, again, in, in the uh, beyond F fine type, the, the support of, of uh, M is no longer just a, a half line or in the positive integer multiples of a minimal imaginary root, but it's, it, it is instead more complicated. And of course, as I mentioned, like even finding a formula for, um, for, uh, for the multiplicities of these imaginary roots um, is, non, is, is, not, is not clear how to do that. One can sort of compute multiplicities in certain ways, um, but, but there's not really an explicit formula for it. And, uh, and, and M is, is a deformation of, of this problem. So it's, it should be a bit harder. Okay. Um, now, 
the here's a here's a point which I wanted to bring attention to, which is how M is behaving differently from the affine setting in beyond the affine type, is that this um, this identity I've said that M inverse is a is an inverse of this quotient with respect to the this cone um, in the affine type. This implies that M is the constant term of this quotient. So the um, it's sort of the, the if you restrict it to the imaginary cone, you just get M. In the Cosmodi case, this is no longer true. Um, so generally, for two power series A and B, just because the support of A is contained in the positive imaginary root cone, uh, it doesn't mean that the if we restrict A times B to the positive imaginary root cone, that's the same as multiple, that, that, that I can't take A out of this product, right? So somehow restricting to the imaginary root cone and multiplying are not commute, like I, I can't change uh, the order of those two. Um, now, maybe this is a bit uh, hard to see just written down here, but but what the, the reason for this is, is simple. It's because I could have um, an imaginary root that's um, sum of a real root and an imaginary root. In affine type, this doesn't happen. But for in, in, in non-affine Cotsmoody types, it does, uh, for example, here. Okay, so this, this really makes M a bit of a pain to deal with, but, uh, but one can kind of carefully define it and it's ultimately everything is fine, but uh, somehow more work uh, needs to go into it than, uh, than, than, than how it, uh, it's sort of more accessible in the, in the affine case. Okay. Um, so I want to say a few things about what is true for M in, in affine type. So again, this is known by Cherednik's solution of McDonald's constant term conjecture. Um, so if you, for example, have, um, have looked at um, affine versions of, of some formulas from Piadic representation theory, then, uh, then this shape of M, of the formula given for M might be somewhat familiar. Um, so it's expressed as an infinite product over there's this, uh, uh, there's this uh, uh, one minus T times uh, Im somehow imaginary root uh, factor times the, the, the multiplicity, so the rank. And then there's something that, uh, a product that involves the exponents of the underlying finite dimensional root system. Again, here, delta is the minimal imaginary root. If you've perhaps at some point looked at McDonald's paper, then maybe this other format uh, will be familiar too. Um, this, is, uh, this is the same as what's written above, um, but it, the product has been written slightly differently uh, with sort of introducing some, some telescoping, kind of extending a telescope. Um, but, uh, um, but I, I, writ, I wrote M in this form um, to, to draw your attention to its shape. Namely, here M is written as a product of factors where I have um, well, I have all of these terms of one minus t to the n times e to the lambda that I that I said I, I want as factors before. And then what are the, the uh, exponents appearing here? Well, t to the, the t to the k factor is squared on the top, and then k minus one and k plus one appear with multiplicity one on the bottom. So if I uh, rewrite this, if I collect the exponents in a polynomial, um, like I've uh, indicated before, so sort of encoding these uh, k and lambda pairs, then, uh, then what I get is a polynomial that's divisible by uh, one minus t squared. Okay, so I mean, maybe, if one looks at McDonald's formula, uh, this the second one, the second format, um, then uh, then then you know you might you might sort of recognize this this shape of of something squared and then off by one things on the in the denominator, um, but the 
this this uh, sort of this this fixation on the one minus t squared is goes beyond just the familiarity of this shape. Um, the quotient actually has some meaning about the about the affine Lie algebra. So let me uh, explain this a little bit. Um, so by uh, again by work of Cherednik and McDonald, for any affine type, m can be written in this shape. Um, so again, we have this some something squared on the on the top, and then off by one factors uh, with multiplicity one in the bottom, and this product is over a set um, that that shows you how to how to translate an imaginary root to a real root, kind of what finite roots you can use to translate an imaginary root to real roots. Um, here, this finite root lattice has to be chosen inside your affine root lattice in a, in a, by, by omitting a, a, an appropriate simple root, um, which is not always the one you expect, but almost always the one you expect, um, but, but it's sort of a specific one. Um, and then again, m lambda, the, the polynomials co collecting the the exponents corresponding to the exponents of t and lambda uh, is a polynomial that's divisible by, by one minus t squared. Okay. Um, so I just want to show you this uh, set s lambda a little bit more. So uh, again, for uh, for example, for a one one, we choose um, alpha one as a uh, as our um, as spanning our, our, our real root system, our chosen real root system, and then, uh, or sorry, finite root system. And then for any imaginary root, we see, we, we show, well, can we, can we uh, translate it by alpha one and get a real root? The answer here will always be yes. For, for A22, the situation is slightly more interesting. We choose alpha zero, um, for our, so we, we omit the rth, uh, simple root to get a, a finite uh, a root subsystem. And then for every imaginary root, we see, well, can we denote, can we uh, translate it by alpha zero and get a, a, a real root? And the answer is yes for two delta, but no for three delta, for example. So these, this S two lambda will be um, a, a one element set, S uh, three lambda will be an empty set. Okay. so the the point of this is that somehow not only are these polynomials that we get in the affine case divisible by one minus t squared, the quotient of them by one minus t squared encodes something about the uh, about the Lie algebra, namely it encodes the heights of the of these roots beta in this s lambda set. Um, so that's uh, something that's uh, maybe interesting to know. Okay, and so now I want to say um, some things about what uh, what we can do to generalize this to the um, to the to to the cosmology types beyond the affine types. So the um, most of what I'm going to say is because M is a, a deformation or these uh, these polynomials that we get at each. Uh, lambda uh, element of the positive imaginary root cone uh, are these polynomials are, are deformations of imaginary root multiplicities. All the results I'm going to say are of the flavor. Let's take a method that computes imaginary root multiplicities and and kind of amp it up a bit to compute them instead. Um, and uh, well, well, the results will be either these or or some corollaries of uh, of ones of this type. Okay, so the first one is the Peterson algorithm for computing uh, imaginary root multiplicities. So as I mentioned, we want to write M as a product, again, over positive imaginary root cone. And for every uh, lambda element in this cone, I want to have a finite product um, of uh, factors of the form one minus t to the n e to the lambda, and the exponent will be some 
negative m lambda n. Okay, so we want to compute the m lambda n's starting from uh, this property of m inverse that it's again an inverse of something we know well with respect to the this cone. So we want to take a power series inverse with respect to a cone and we want to compute m or well equivalently m inverse by induction on on the height of lambda. Uh, this can be done by an algorithm that is polynomial in the height of lambda. Again, it is a generalization of the Peterson algorithm um, for um, the multiplicity of lambda. And it's easy to see that, well, because of the while invariance of M, uh, one, one proceeds by height, but one gets a few things for free because it, it suffices to compute um, it for one lambda per W orbit by, by while group orbit. So it's sufficient to compute this on the anti-dominant cone, for example. Okay, and the, the process itself is, is not very, very hard. Um, essentially, one takes this formula in the middle and looks at it, um, again, by induction on height. Um, and the ingredients that one takes is, uh, well, the the, the support on the on the smaller heights as well as the real roots. One has to know what the what the real roots of the root system are, but that's uh, um, you know that can uh, that can be computed, for example, by uh, taking a while or a bit of the simple roots. Okay, so this can be encoded, and in fact, one can produce some uh, some data about what these m lambda and uh, exponents are, and um, and we have done this. I will show you some. Um, some results of, uh, of this running this algorithm later. So one can use, for example, Sage to do this. Okay. Um, so this is just an illustration again that we proceed by induction on height, and um, and we have to we this this uh, these uh, bigger blue dots here are a, are a while orbit. So we have to only do this uh, again once on. Um, on this while orbit. Okay, so the next formula I want to say is going to look um, significantly le less pleasant to look at. Um, this is a generalized Berman-Moody formula. Um, so again, if, if we set t to zero, uh, this formula recovers uh, Berman and Moody's formula for the multiplicity of lambda. Um, so now I, I just want to remind uh, you, in case uh, the, the, the denoting everything by m has uh, has uh, has interfered with understanding, that this m lambda t is a polynomial that collects the exponents of the of the product form of of our correction factor m. Okay. Um, so so this looks very technical, um, and it's so the proof of it. Uh, mimics the proof of the Berman Moody formula, but maybe I, I want to say the following about it ahead of time is that um, the P Peterson algorithm is just codable and you can use it to um, compute examples of these uh, M lambda T polynomials and stare at them and formulate con conjectures. This is uh, maybe more useful for trying to prove those conjectures. Um, and I'll show a few examples of corollaries of this um, in the next couple of slides. Um, but the, um, so, so here I just want to point out a couple of things about what the meaning of these things is. Um, so, so lambda, again, is an element of the uh, positive root cone, so is kappa, and when I say kappa divides lambda, I just mean lambda is an integer multiple of kappa. So this mu value here is just the Möbius function's value on a, on a positive integer. So nothing uh, more mysterious than that. Um, so these are all just uh, an integers uh, and an integer's inverse. And then um, here, uh, the, this par is vector partitions of lambda. Uh, there's both an ordered and an unordered version of this statement. Uh, they are not... Um, significantly different. Um, and then um, 
one one has some uh, things that uh, one has this p kappa i t. This is a polynomial that is defined in terms of a modified Poincaré polynomial and some real constant partitions of uh, of kappa i. So somehow it's uh, it's it's an expression again in terms of the uh, constant partition. So one can decompose um, an element of uh, the, the imaginary root cone as a sum of real roots, right? And then one, one does this for, for every element of this vector partition. Anyway, it's, it's complicated. There's, there's, a, there's a binomial coefficient or a multinomial coefficient here. Again, it's a, it's a bit of a mess to look at, but it turns out to be useful for proving things. Okay. Um, for example, it's uh, again I haven't I haven't given you the the exact definition of uh, this uh, p kappa i um, polynomial here, and it's a bit mysterious what it is, but but one can show that for uh, that that it's it vanishes at uh, at one, uh, which is which will be useful in a moment. Okay. So again, if if this is uh, if this looks disgusting, then uh, just let me say it's a it's again a deformation of a, of a root multiplicity formula, and it's useful for proving things. Okay. So for example, um, one can prove uh, using this uh, formula that if uh, that, that m lambda t, this polynomial we're trying to compute, is only non-zero if lambda is in fact an imaginary root. So a priori, we know that um, m lambda, uh, the constant term of m lambda is non-zero only if lambda is an imaginary root, but in fact, the whole polynomial is not there. It vanishes if, um, if lambda is, is not an imaginary root. And then um, one can make some, some observations about the correspondence between root systems and, um, and this, these correction factors. Um, so for example, um, if, for, if one takes a, a root subsystem and the corresponding root sublattice, then uh, the correction factor restricts um, kind of naturally. Um, and uh, if, if uh, phi is a reducible root system, then the correction factor is the product of the correction factors for the components, for the reducible components. Um, and then here's a fact, which is just a, is just a fact that one can learn about from a, from Katz's book or, or, or something that, that if one has a, an element of the imaginary, um, positive imaginary root cone um, that is not a root and it's anti-dominant, then it's, its support, then its support in the Dinkin diagram is disconnected. This is, uh, you know, if you don't care about uh, this correction factor, but care about um, Cosmody root systems, then maybe this is, uh, if, you, if you didn't know, then this is a fact that you can uh, put in your pocket for later. Um, but putting all of these not very hard observations and the berman moody formula together, one can show that these polynomials m lambda t are divisible by one minus t squared um, again. So in, in the Cosmody beyond the affine type as well. Okay, so this is, this is a generalization of a property that holds in the affine case. Okay, so again, to, to prove this one has to use the generalized Burma Moody formula. And uh, essentially here, uh, the, by this Burma Moody formula, uh, the, the terms are over uh, partitions of um, partitions of lambda, and somehow because of because of the part because of the support of lambda in the Dinkin diagram being disconnected, um, one can always find at least two 
uh, to, uh, to to places where one is a root, more or less. Right. So this sum, um, always the sums in these, um, uh, for these vector partitions always have at least two terms. And that's, that's why this uh, property holds. So again, it's somehow a technical proof of, of this property. So I want to, um, I want to kind of stop here for a moment because, well, we were very curious when we were thinking about this with, with Dinecker and Ian, is this property true? I mean, when we, you know, we looked, we could compute some examples, it looked like, yes, this polynomial is always divisible by one minus T squared. We knew that in the affine case, the polynomial is always divisible by one minus T squared. And in fact, the quotient has some meaning about the, about the affine Lie algebra. And so finally, we, um, we kind of uh, squeeze the proof of this divisibility out of the berman moody formula in an entirely technical manner. But we have no idea what the quotient means about the, affine, about the Kotz moody lie algebra. So, so this, is, this is one thing that's, uh, that's kind of uh, tantalizing about this correction factor beyond the affine type is that it seems to exhibit some properties and it seems to in particular exhibit some properties that are generalizations of affine properties, but, but the only way we know how to prove it is, is, is kind of un, <laughs> unrevealing, right? Okay, so I want to um, show a couple more of these properties that one can, uh, um, one can observe with the hopes that uh, they will be somewhat uh, interesting to you as well. And maybe you can tell us why they are true. So let, um, I've, we've now said that M lambda T, this polynomial collecting the exponents is divisible, divisible by one minus T squared. So let's divide it by one minus T squared. And, um, and let's, let's compute what we get. Um, I mean, we have to compute this, for example, using the generalized Peterson algorithm. And we'll, um, so we'll compute this for some hyperbolic root systems with these three Carton matrices. Okay, and, um, and so I'll show you what we get. Um, for example, for the Carton matrix two, negative three, negative two, two, um, we get these, polynomials here, of course, one, one means alpha zero plus alpha one. Uh, this, these, are, these are the coefficients in the simple roots. And uh, well, the constant term, one, one, two, two, three, three, six, seven, six, um, 272, et cetera, these are, these are the root multiplicities. That's not surprising. And then otherwise, um, the, the thing that's perhaps blatantly obvious is that this is not non-strictly, non but these polynomials have alternating coefficients. Um, and, you know, I mean, of course, one looks at the first couple of them and, um, and tries, to, tries to find some meaning to these coefficients and, and you know, hope, but, but you can go quite far. Everything we've checked, is going, it, it is alternating. We don't know what the coefficients mean beyond that, but but they are they do seem to be alternating, and we don't know why. Okay, so again for two negative three negative three two, uh, this is again the case. Okay, so the constant terms are root multiplicities. The coefficients are alternating. Okay, let's go to the next one it is no longer the case, right? For example, we have for four, five, two here, we have a T Q plus T squared. So it does seem like the alternating coefficient behavior stops after rank two, um, but, uh, but, but, but nevertheless, we can, we can, we can compute some, um, um, some, some uh, of the coefficients here. So, so in some sense, this, this left us with, uh, with more questions than answers. Um, so here's a, here's a conjecture. Um, the, the polynomials chi lambda have alternating sign coefficients in rank two hyperbolic type. So again, what is chi lambda? Or we take the correction factor, we write it as a pro in a product form, collect the coefficients, uh, the exponents for each lambda, 
into a polynomial divided by one minus t squared. This should mean something. It means something in the affine uh, in the affine types. We don't know what it means in the uh, in the Cosmody type, which is the next problem. Can you interpret the coefficients of this in terms of the Cosmody Lie algebra or its structure? Remember how I showed that it was in, like in the affine setting, it was encoding some heights about um, about an, uh, a finite root subsystem. Okay, now um, can you give? Uh, we don't even know the size, so so somehow like when we can compute these polynomials, but we uh, in some sense we we don't know what kind of upper bounds uh, for uh, exist for the degree or the individual coefficients of it. And then um, there are some uh, further questions. Um, for example, Cutts polynomials also uh, are a deformation of imaginary root multiplicities. Uh, of course, for those, uh, that is a significantly harder statement than it is for M, for which, which it is uh, almost obvious. Um, uh, what, is there a relationship between M lambda T and other other uh, families of polynomials that uh, that deform imaginary root multiplicities, and uh, also as a as a as a as a further generalization of the of both M and and the uh, uh, the story in the affine case, uh, can one compute the Dolbock homology of the of a Katz modified variety? If one could, then then that would give a two parameter generalization of of uh, the correction factor M. So it's again a yet harder, harder question than uh, than the one I've been asking here. Um, thank you. That is all I wanted to say. Thank you so much. Let's thank the speaker. Let me stop recording.